Hi guys, it's Maya here. I'm alive, I survived the surgery. If you guys are wondering what I'm talking about and this is your first time here, you can go check some of my previous content or if you're even interested in what it's like to prepare for gender reassignment surgery, I just posted a video a few weeks ago on that. So you guys can check that out. But yes, I'm alive, I survived. During the pandemic, I had my gender reassignment surgery, which in a lot of ways is the biggest surgery that trans people can have in a way to affirm their gender. So for me, anyways, and it was just an absolutely wild experience. I went into this surgery expecting and preparing for the worst, but hoping for the best. That was my motto with this situation. I was given only a two months notice, pretty much, for the surgery date, which was pretty crazy to me because I thought that I would have at least six months to prepare given the usual wait times. But I think the pandemic may have even expedited the process for people within Canada to go to Dr. Broussard in Montreal to get gender reassignment surgery because not a lot of international travelers can make it through the border right now. So because of that, I think that that's why my surgery took place on October 6th. It's officially one month post-op. However, I began dilation in order to retain the vaginal canal a week after surgery. So I'm only three weeks into my first month of dilation. In this video, I'm just gonna give you guys my full experience from the surgery to now and share my thoughts with you guys. I thought that this kind of video could help anyone who's considering gender reassignment surgery, more specifically, vaginoplasty. So the day before, or rather the night before surgery, I went with my boyfriend to the Holiday Inn in Laval. And basically you go to this Holiday Inn and you are given a few meal coupons and the next morning you are able to go down to the lobby and coordinate with the receptionist to get a taxi ticket and go straight to the hospital, the surgery clinic, I don't know what you would call it. And this hotel is basically in tandem with the GRS Montreal Clinic. Uh, the people there working, they, they know that clients are coming in and it's pretty much from what I saw, just trans people coming for the surgery and staying at that hotel, especially during the pandemic. So they have a whole system figured out there, which was really awesome. So the night before I had to do two fleet enemas, one at 4 p.m., one at 8 p.m. I had to shower. The morning of, I had to use a chlorhexidine soap, which is a antibacterial, antiseptic soap, pre-surgical scrub kind of thing. I also had to trim the area for the surgery. On the morning of the surgery, I got into my taxi and hugged my boyfriend goodbye. It was really hard because since the COVID-19 pandemic is happening, I am not allowed to have any guests come to see me at the hospital or at the convalescent home for eight days. Can you believe that? So I have to go through this surgery all by myself. I got to the surgery clinic pretty quickly and it's kind of nice inside. It's like really modern and fresh. Uh, I was brought to the nurses eventually. I filled out all my health questionnaires and everything and signed in and stuff. And the nurses gave me some pills to take before surgery. And then basically I had to strip down and go into my hospital gown and put on my little uh, hairnet scrub thing and put on my little paper slippers. And I was brought to a long hallway to wait for entrance into the surgery room. It was really scary. I remember feeling cold and feeling like very nervous about everything. Um, I was definitely more nervous, I would say, when I got my breast augmentation because that was my first surgery surgery. And so that was scary to me. Um, and it was just a lot more quick, but, and it was also late at night. So it was kind of weird, but this was like literally at like 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock or something like that. So it was like, middle of the day, bright sunshine. So then I was brought to my surgical room and it was very bright and white and they actually had a huge window overlooking a view with an autumn tree and I was like so taken aback. I'm like, can someone just like poke their head in and be like, oh look, a vaginoplasty surgery. <laughs> I don't know, probably not. It's probably in like a private area, but it was just very strange to see a surgery room with such a beautiful view and window. So it kind of helped calm me down a bit and the first thing I had to do that I remember is just hunch over a pillow on the surgery table and the spinal anesthesiologist inserted the needle, I guess, into the middle of my back where my spine was. And then voila, I was paralyzed from the waist down. 
such a weird experience, couldn't move my legs, like so bizarre. And then I was given sedatives earlier by the nurses, so I actually was not given general anesthesia, just regional. And so because of that, I was awake for a large portion of the surgery, which I just, in hindsight, I'm like, wow, that's really freaky. But while it was happening, because of the sedative they gave me, I just was not in my right mind. And I just didn't really like fully process what was happening. I had like a divider covering up the lower half of my body so I couldn't see anything. But I remember just being really whacked out on drugs and just like trying to almost speak in a French to some of the staff around me because I was like, I'm in Montreal, I should start learning French. Like, and I took French, mind you, until 12th grade, but I just know I was making a fool of myself. And I remember saying something like, oh, you guys have such a beautiful, beautiful windows in here. That's so nice. I've never like seen a surgery room that has such beautiful outdoor windows. So that was interesting. I don't know, I did fall asleep at some point and then I, uh, woke up and they brought me over to my hospital bed that I would be staying in for the next two days and Yeah, that was the surgery it wasn't painful until obviously afterwards when the Anesthesia on the lower half wears off and stuff and I had to slowly start moving my toes and things I felt like uh, the bride from Kill Bill because I just was slowly regaining sensation in my legs It was so weird. I had an ice pack on top and in between my legs and I had a catheter and I had an IV drip. It was a whole experience. I'd never gone through something like this before. So it was quite traumatic in a sense, just going through the experience in general. It's not that anything bad particularly happened to me, but it was just overwhelming. And I knew that it would be. On the first day I was able to stand up, but I had a lot of pain on one side. I almost felt like the stitches were pulling, but it might have just been chafing from the swelling um, between my thigh and the area that the vagina, the vulva, I don't know. And I wasn't quite sure what it was, but I wasn't able to walk on the first day. So I laid back down and basically just chilled for the rest of that day. They give you anti-inflammatories, antibiotics. They give you Tylenol and Tramadol if you're experiencing more pain. So I was just pretty much just laying there, not doing much. I wasn't really like in shock from having the surgery because you can't see anything. Everything's packed up. Everything still feels the same in your mind. So you, at least I didn't process everything. But then by the second day, they gave us breakfast in the morning. And unfortunately, I was feeling a bit nauseous. I did make sure that they gave me a little basin, but it was really shallow. And I started eating, and then I just couldn't do it. And I just started throwing up. And unfortunately, since the basin was so shallow, I just ended up getting it all over myself and splashing everywhere. It was like the worst experience that I had probably through this entire thing process um, only because it was also so painful to be throwing up um, your muscles contract in that area and you can just feel so much pain it's like coughing and sneezing like none of those feel pleasant at this time so it was just a really sad experience but a nurse came and changed my clothes and everything and it was fine Eventually, they made me do some laps around the nurse's station in the hospital, and that went fine. I was still experiencing that same pain that I mentioned earlier, uh, but eventually, uh, once your two days in the hospital are done, they remove your catheter bag, but you still have the catheter in you, but now you're responsible for going for your own bathroom breaks, and they make you walk over to the convalescent escalade, which is basically a care home which is basically a care home with 24 hour nurses who will help you to recover and teach you how to take care of yourself post-surgery. So I walked over there, it's attached to the surgery building, not far at all, however, my room, I had to do like three flights of stairs and mind you, this is like the third day after surgery. So it was quite daunting, but I did it and it worked out. And once you get to the care home, they really expect you to take more of an active role in your recovery. They expect you to do pretty much everything yourself and they want you to be more self-sufficient. So that's why they have your catheter bag removed. You have to be conscious and go to the bathroom every two to three hours to empty your bladder. It was really freaky because you just have this tube with a valve sticking out of you and you have to turn the valve in order to pee. And if you empty your bladder too much, you can have a bladder spasm where it sucks on your bladder and it's just so painful. Oh, the catheter was like hands down the worst 
one of the worst parts of this experience. It was just so uncomfortable and it's just like stabbed into your urethral opening and you can feel it moving around a bit when you're moving and I just, it was the most uncomfortable situation. I would say all in all with this experience, like the pain was trumped by the discomfort. Discomfort is how I would describe this surgical experience. You're just not comfortable. Everything's swollen, everything feels achy and you can't, I couldn't even walk properly. I was like hunching and you have bruising from like the left side of your lower abdomen all the way to your right side. At least I did, it was all yellow and then splotches of like blue and purple. So it was very, very intense and I just did not feel good, you know? And I mean, how could you after the surgery? So it wasn't overwhelmingly painful. There were moments for sure, but I would say that the pain level, at least at that point in time, was like a four. And I was able to manage that with Tylenol for the most part. There was only a couple times where I asked for the tramadol. Now after like five or six days, they take the catheter out that feels so much better, but you have to pee in this container and measure how much urine is coming out. And then they do ultrasounds on your bladder multiple times to make sure that it's emptying out properly. That was a weird experience. This whole process was just so bizarre. I don't wanna say that it was like demoralizing or dehumanizing, but you just don't feel like yourself. Like the most private area of your body has been operated on and you are just like a hunk of flesh that's being taken care of. Like it just, you lose all of your inhibitions in a sense. And it just, I felt like a zombie. Like I didn't feel like myself at all. The day after my catheter was removed, uh, the stent was then removed. And the stent is a packing that is basically like a condom filled with gauze and that keeps your vaginal canal open. And they take it out on the day after the catheter if everything goes smoothly. And that really hurt me because the stitches that they had to keep it in place were really thick, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but they felt really thick. And when she was like cutting them, like each cut released tension and I could feel it opening, opening. And I was just like, ah, oh, this feels so bizarre. And it just was not pleasant. And then she pulled out the packing and she's like, do you wanna see it? And I'm like, no, I was already so queasy. So she threw it in the trash and then I had to start dilating. And for those of you who don't know, dilating is basically you put this like honestly dildo shaped object. It's hard plastic, they're bright colors, they're medical instruments. You put it inside your vagina for the first month, four times a day, 30 minutes inside for each time. And then you have to douche after each time, so that's four times a day. And then once a day you shower and twice a day you do a sitz bath. And a sitz bath is lightly soapy water that covers the entire surgical site and just kind of prevents it from getting infection. The food in the care home was, I would say it's like, it was okay. Like it was decent, like as a vegan and I told them I was vegan, the options were decent. There were some days that were great and there were some days that were not so great. The not so great days, there was pasta that was served to me that was like so old it started to harden again and there was no sauce on it. So it was just like, the worst thing ever but then there were some really good days where they had like a tempeh stir fry or they gave me this baguette with vegan cheese and garlic and tomatoes and while i was in the convalescent home i watched emily in paris on my phone that's like one of the only shows that i watched and it was such a nice escape i know that that show a lot of people are hating on it but i honestly loved it it reminded me of the early 2000s style and Gossip Girl-esque in a way, and I know that they referenced it as well, and it was just such a fun escape and made me forget about surgery and the pain and everything, and when I got that silly baguette thing for lunch one day, I was like, oh, it's like I'm in Paris too. <laughs> I was obviously on drugs though, but it was, it's just like the little things that like make you happy when you're recovering and you feel like you don't have a lot to look forward to in the moment. But I was so happy once I got to leave the convalescent home. The nurses were all nice and they helped me a lot, which was great, but it's just nice to be able to choose your own schedule, to choose your own food, and to be back with someone that you actually know. So uh, coming back, um, Igor picked me up and got me some flowers, which was really nice. I came back and some friends got me flowers as well. And my dilation begins, four times a day dilating, four times a day douching, two times a day sits bath, one times a day showering. And all of that takes anywhere from six to eight hours. So you really only have about like an hour to an hour and a half between each 
session. And mind you, it does get quicker and it does get easier the longer you do it and you become desensitized to looking at the surgical site because let me just say like, after this surgery, the vagina looks like, the vulva, the vagina, it looks like a massacre. Like it looks disturbing. Keep in mind, this is a major reconstructive surgery on one of the most sensitive areas of your body. So you can't expect it to just be cute overnight. Like not gonna happen. Even still to this day, one month post-op, it looks gross. And I'm gonna admit that. It's still swollen, there's still open wounds. They say it takes around two months for the wounds to fully close. And so I just cannot speak to the results of the surgery. I've had some minor complications so far, mostly just wound dehiscence from what I can perceive. And that's when the sutures or the stitches uh, split open and the wound reopens and so I've had that in some areas and it's very not aesthetically pleasing I don't know how that will affect healing in the long run I really can't speak to the aesthetics yet as I've mentioned but I would say that dilating has gotten easier I've definitely had some breakdowns in the early days just feeling so trapped because Inevitably, when your day is consumed by these tasks over and over, repetitive, having to look at your surgical site and see the damage that's done and that you're trying to heal from, it's very mentally taxing. And so I definitely had some breakdowns feeling like, I don't know how I can do this. It's so uncomfortable to dilate. I have to do this four times a day. I have to do this entire routine that consumes my life and I barely have time to watch a show in between each dilation. So, but I'm finding, I'm finding my schedule now and I only have one more week of four times a day and then I can go down to three times for the next two months and then it goes down to two times a day, which is in the morning and in the evening and that's so manageable. So I'm really looking forward to recovering and being at those later stages. This is definitely not a glamorous surgery in any way, shape or form. It's really hard. It's difficult. It's not only physically demanding of you, but it is very mentally demanding. I would even say it's more mentally demanding than physically demanding in some ways. I still have some numbness in areas on the outside and it's too swollen for me to know like what it looks like on the inside. So I can't really talk about that stuff yet. I do luckily have an appointment with Dr. Broussard. It's my one month follow-up, which is actually more like a month and a half follow-up from my surgery because I elected to stay in Montreal during the first two months of my recovery, just so I would be closer to the clinic if I was having issues and stuff. So I'm thankful that I can go see him in person for that post-op appointment. I'm gonna ask him all my questions about the swelling, about the numbness, about the wound dehiscence and stuff like that. One of the most important things that I find post-surgery is keeping the area dry since you have to dilate and use lubricant four times a day. That can create a very, very moist environment. And so I've been using a little portable fan to keep the area dry when I'm air drying after every single dilation. And that's been helping me a little bit because if you do have moisture, you end up getting something called fibrin, which is a really gross, gooey, goopy, like yellow, gross sludge that kind of forms around the wound when it's left moist for too long. Not glamorous, just giving you guys the straight up facts. I was gonna say that today is the first day I've put on makeup since I've had the surgery, but yesterday was actually the first day because I filmed this video originally yesterday. However, the lighting was so bad. I filmed it at night. My face was like this close to the camera. It just was not the look. So I refilmed it today for you guys. So today's the second day I put on makeup since my surgery, which was October 6th. I just have not had the time or energy and I rarely ever get dressed only if I'm going for a walk. A few days ago, I went for a walk for the first time with Igor to the grocery store and we picked out some groceries together and I actually felt like a normal human being for the first time in a while. And that was really nice. But other than that, I kind of just exist in these robes because when you are, taking a sits bath twice a day, you're dilating four times a day, you're taking a shower every day, like you're constantly taking your clothes off. So putting on pants and sweaters and everything all throughout the day is just not the look for me right now. 
if you guys are interested, I can do like a what I eat in a day post-surgery video. Just stuff that I'm trying to focus on eating in order to recover faster. Vitamins, protein, strategies I have as a vegan. You guys can let me know in the comment section if you'd want to see something like that. One thing that a lot of people ask trans people after they've had this surgery, the gender confirmation surgery, in my case, the vaginoplasty, they ask them like, do you feel complete now? Like after the surgery, did you feel like you finally matched with your body? And the answer is no. And the reason why is because for me at least, once you finish the surgery, you have no idea what's between your legs. And when you do know it's a massacre, it is a horrible looking thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not being very cruel to myself, but it really is. It's very disturbing looking. You are just so focused on recovery. You are exhausted from having to dilate four times a day. The last thing on your mind is, I'm so happy that I have this thing between my legs. Like, no, once it heals and once I feel like I can go back to my normal life, then I think I will have that epiphany, that aha moment of like, oh my God, like I'm where I'm meant to be you know? And right now it doesn't feel that way because who knows how I'm going to heal? Who knows what it's going to look like at the end? Who knows what sensation I'll have? Like you can't pretend to be happy about something that isn't there yet, you know? So it's all about recovery for me. It's all about hoping for the best and making sure I never miss a dilation, a bath, a shower, anything, doing all of the doctor's orders to ensure that everything heals and doesn't get infected. I wanted to thank you guys so much for following me on this journey and for supporting me and sending me all your kind words. I felt so inspired by you guys when you sent me all your messages right after I was done my surgery and stuff. And I was feeling pretty defeated during certain points post-surgery, especially since I had to be alone in the hospital in the convalescent home and not with friends or family or any visitors. And I was feeling pretty defeated and I was like, well, this is exhausting. I'm in pain. This is such a traumatic experience but I read all of your kind words and your messages and it really helped me and gave me the motivation that I needed to keep going so thank you guys so much if you want to keep following me on other platforms as well I have Instagram don't be afraid to thumbs up this video if you found it informational and also hit that bell notification button if you want to be alerted right away when I post my next update and I also just wanted to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. As you guys know, with this surgery, you can't really work for like, I think eight to 12 weeks. And that's pretty much like, I, I'm doing YouTube videos and stuff now, but like, I'm not able to do acting. I'm not able to do anything physically demanding. I can't lift more than 10 pounds. And so I haven't been able to work really at all since the surgery, so I would not, be able to go through this experience without my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much. Um, I appreciate it every single day. So just know that. Um, if you guys are interested in following me on anything else, I have all my socials linked down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.